Here's a look at all the materials you're gonna need for this project. I used one skein of Lion Brand Off the Hook Faux Fur Yarn. This particular color is the Husky color. And this one skein has made these two headbands and I actually have a fair amount of yarn left. There might be enough yarn in here to do three headbands. Um, definitely two adult size and one um, kid size but maybe three adult size. And then the only other thing that you need besides the yarn is a pair of scissors and your fingers. Um, I got this particular yarn at Joanne Fabrics online, um, but you might be able to find it at any craft store or online at Lion Brand Yarns. Hi everyone. Today we are gonna learn how to make this super cute little faux fur headband. See, we make a little tube. Um, this is a great project if you are either new to knitting and crochet, don't know how to do either. Um, also, if you've got kids in the house, um, this is a great project. Um, we're gonna be using the Lion Brand Off the Hook Faux Fur Yarn. And I'll show you this yarn. It actually has these loops in here, little loops that are already pre-made. So this pattern actually takes no crochet hooks, no knitting needles, and no prior knowledge about knitting or crocheting at all. Um, so again, great for kids, great for people that are just learning craft um, or stuck in the house with our latest pandemic and all of us are working from home. Um, I think this would also be a great project if you or someone you know has some limited dexterity in their hands or their fingers, um, but still kind of wants to keep busy or do something crafty. Again, there's no holding of needles or crochet hooks with this one. You do it all with your fingers. Um, so it could be, um, depending on um, the uh, dexterity of the person, um, it could be a great project for someone that struggles with um, some of the finger movement as well. So I'm gonna show you how to get started with this. This is the finished project. I'm gonna put that off to the side. And we're gonna start with the end of our faux fur loopy yarn. You can see I have a long end right there. I'm gonna cut that off later. We're gonna start with four loops and that's going to be the width of our project. So we find the first four loops and lay them out flat. And then we're gonna start with the fifth loop. So the next loop, and we're just gonna take it and pull it through that fourth loop. And then we're gonna keep on going. So we take the next loop on our working yarn, bring it across, pull it through, and keep going. Across, pull it through, and last one in our row, so pull it through. All right, congratulations, your first row is done. I told you this was gonna be easy. All right, so I'm gonna pull those kind of flat so you can see them. I told you we started with four loops and we have just pulled through one loop on all four, oops. So you can see there is our first row. We have four little loops here, one, two, three, and four. All right, first row done. So now what we're gonna do for this pattern is we're gonna pick up this piece and flip it over. So now your yarn tail flips to the other side. Make sure you can find all four of your loops. And we're gonna do row number two. So keep working with the working yarn, find the next loop, pull it through. And I'm pulling these through from the back to the front. But honestly, as long as you do it the same every time, this pattern should be exactly the same. So if you're more comfortable pulling from the front to the back, that works too. But I'm finding the loop coming up underneath and pulling through and keep going. All right, that is our second row done. And you can see that this yarn is really chunky. Um, so it's made, um, you know, a couple inches already um, of our work. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep going. Um, I'm gonna show you one more round, or one more row, sorry. And so we flipped our work. You're gonna pull it, take the next working loop, pull it through, keep moving on down the line. That's two, 
three and four. And at the end of every row, I like to kind of pull mine, pull the little loops up so we make sure you got them. And then flip. I'm gonna do one more. We should be able to see the pattern start to show up. Sometimes this yarn gets a little bit twisted. You just kind of have to fiddle with the loops until they start laying flat. Three. Four. All right. So what you're seeing here, you can already start to see this pattern start to peek through. Um, now this faux fur yarn is very floofy and fluffy, um, so it's, it's going to hide a lot of mistakes. Um, but you can see already there's a little ridge here where one of my rows were, and there's another one here. Um, this is because I've been flipping the work back and forth as I work side to side. Um, for those of you that knit, um, this is basically creating a garter stitch pattern. Um, it also keeps the yarn um, or keeps your finished piece from rolling up. Um, those of you that are familiar with knitting know that if you just work flat and stockinette stitch, that the work tends to roll and curl. And I noticed that with this yarn too, is that if I just did a flat um, stockinette piece, that it tended to roll up. And I actually like that it's wide um, and big and bold. Um, so that's couple reasons why I flip it back and forth. I really like that it adds this little textural detail. Let's pull it a little closer so you can see. Gives it some visual interest. Um, if you don't know what any of those knitting terms mean, don't worry about it at all. Just keep on going. And you want to continue to work your piece until it'll fit around your head or fit around the head of the person that you're making it for. And it'll, you'll want it to um, stretch a little bit so that it fits nice and snug. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to work until I have a bit, maybe about 15 inches worth. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to finish it up. All right, guys, we're back. Um, I've finished up quite a bit of my, um, my headband. Um, for reference, this took me about five minutes um, to do this whole thing. You can really see the texture starting to pop out as those rows. Um, like I said before, this is because we're flipping it back and forth. So if you like that nubby texture, this one's for you. Um, so one thing that I wanted to show you guys as you're figuring out what length to make this, I wanted to show you how stretchy this is. So you can really pull it. Um, what you wanna do is make sure that your headband fits the person that you are making it for when it is a little bit stretched because you want to make sure that the headband fits a little bit snugly just to make sure that it doesn't fall off and stretch out over time so yeah measure your head i already did that i wrapped it around my head make sure that i could stretch it a little bit and that the two ends met together so now what we're going to do is we're going to finish this guy up so we still have our four loops right here those are our working loops and we're going to take the starting end and fold the piece over lengthwise so that your two short ends are together. Now, you wanna find your four loops here, one, two, three, four. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull one by one, pull those loops up through the starting end of our work. So here's the very first row that we did. And this yarn is chunky, so there's gonna be holes in it. If you just kind of stick your fingers in there, you'll be able to find the holes. So we're gonna start with this first loop here, pull that through, second loop, and you want to pull them evenly across. So make sure you're not pulling all four through the same hole. There's three, spaced out a little bit, and the fourth one comes right on the end right here. Okay, so make sure that you don't lose your four loops. They should still be sticking up. But what you'll see is that now we have made a tube and it looks a little small here, but it is really squishy and really stretchy. So this, um, my size right here will fit an adult size head. All right. Now, these four stitches that you have are still live stitches. 
That means all of your work can unravel. So what we have to do is we have to bind off these stitches. So with your working yarn out here, we're gonna start on the opposite end of your working yarn. So start over here with this end. You're gonna take this loop on the end and the one right next to it. So stick that second loop into the first loop and pull it up. So you effectively have bound off this first stitch and then move on to the next set of stitches. So this is your second and your third loop. Third loop goes through the second, pull it. And then the last two, fourth loop comes through the third loop. And now you only have one live loop. So your working yarn is out here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the first loop on the working yarn, pull that one through, and then I'm gonna take my scissors, I'm gonna cut in between these two loops. So just go ahead and cut your yarn off. Okay, yarn goes to the side. All right, so now you can kind of pull that through and if you want, I don't know if you, how well you can see this, but the yarn is held together, this little black cord, and that's where all of the faux fur is attached. I'm just gonna snip that little cord, basically cutting this loop open. Probably not gonna be able to show you guys, great. Snip it, all right. So now you have the two ends you have the one end from where you started and you have the one end from where you finished. And I'm just gonna take those and tie them in a knot. Okay, good. So now you have secured all of your working stitches. The last thing we've gotta do is take these ends and basically hide them. So remember, like I said, when we were binding off the yarn, looks pretty solid, but you can stick your fingers through it. So all we're gonna do is take these ends and weave them in. You can just do this wherever you find some little openings. And then find the other one and do the same thing, pull them through. So basically all we're doing is just hiding the ends of the yarn through through. Okay, and it's okay if little bits like this stick up because this is actually the wrong side of the work. So when you wear it, you're gonna flip it inside out and you can see that this is the top and when I flip it over, well, it's hard to find. There's my seam right there. From the outside, you can't even tell that there's a seam there. When you look on the inside, it looks a little bulky um, as you wear this, I would suggest you put this seam towards the back of your head and this side towards the front of your head. Um, it just makes it lie a little bit flatter. But there we go. So these are adult size, um, fit an adult size, has, adult size head. You can also change up this pattern if you'd like to make this for a younger child. If you don't want something quite this thick, feel free to start out with three stitches and, or three loops instead of four loops, um, and that'll make it a little bit skinnier this way. And if you need it to be a little bit um, tighter or a little bit smaller around, just create less rows um, when you're making your final piece. So there you go, that is our crochet, or not crocheted, not knitted, not crocheted faux fur headband. Um, again, I think this would be a great project for kids or people who are just learning the fundamental fundamentals of crochet and knitting. Um, also, if there's anyone out there that tries this, um, that has a little bit limited dexterity in their fingers or their hands, um, I would love to know how this works out for you. If this gives you a little bit of a crafty out, outlet, I would, I would love to hear your experience about that. Otherwise, if you make this project, um, feel free to tag me um, at Different View Designs. I'm on Instagram, and I would love to see your finished products, and I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye.